Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and to be glad. Well, this is Monday, so it's got to be marvelous. Well, I pray you had a wonderful weekend as we did, locked up. <laughs> but during this time, we are seeking the Lord, praying, reading our Bibles. Yesterday, I took Ramona out for a little drive just to get out of the house and went through a pretty part of um, Arizona. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Paul. God bless you. And uh, so that's what we did yesterday. And we listened to sermons and praying and believing God. And so I encourage you to do that. We're still doing this every day. We are, uh, we are uh, of course, praising the Lord and worshiping God. And uh, hi, Elsa. And then we are um, uh, taking Holy Communion, which we already did this morning. And we're giving offerings every day. And I want to encourage you to do that as well. Hello, Rick. Hello, Catalina. Hello, Timothy. God bless you. I enjoyed your little talk that you had uh, yesterday. Uh, so um, we are definitely living in wonderful, challenging times. We're going to find out, I already know this, is the Bible real or not? Well, I know it's real. I know God's promises are yea and amen. And now I believe that the world that has laughed at us fanatics, maybe you're going to take another look at us and say, you guys weren't as crazy as we, you, as we thought you were, all right? Hi, Gabriella. Hi, Victor Cruz. God bless you. All right. I'm going to give you my $4 Walmart sermon. We're going to talk today about the black box. When there is an accident on an airplane, especially a major airlines, the first thing after the crash is that they want to find that black box. Why? Because everything that has happened prior and during that crash is recorded in that black box. So they want to get a hold of that black box. It's very important. Well, we have a black box, my dear friend. It's found in Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. This is scary. Everything that you've ever done, every place that you've ever been is recorded. That's right. Many times I've had people testify, and as I read some of their stories, that before they died, their whole life instantaneously flashed before them like on a video machine. I believe that the Bible says that the searching of the inward parts of the belly, so everything that you and I have ever done, every sin that we have ever committed, but thanks be unto God, I'll talk about that later, about that sin. So that is that black box. And so this is this black box. It is the, uh, this is our soul. This is the inward parts. And that black box, it represents your life. This black box represents my sin and my sin. Now the Bible tells us in Revelations chapter 20, verse 20, uh, verse 11, I believe. It says this in Revelations 20, verse 11. Then I saw the great white throne in him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things that were written in the book. So everything that we've ever done, sinner and saint, is recorded. God, this is the black book, all right? This is the black VCR, DVD, whatever you want to call it. Everything's recorded. Now, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. 
and they were judged each one according to his works. Now, I was a backslidden teenager, committed a stupid crime, stole some tires that didn't even fit my car. Nobody home, you know? I, I came before the judge, and they brought me before the judge, and they, they uh, wrote the, uh, repeated the sentence, the crime that I had committed. As a backslidden teenager, I had heard the preaching of the word of God. I stood before that judge and immediately went back to the scriptures where it said one day that every man will stand before the judge and give account of everything he's ever done. Wow. All right. Now. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when God looks at this part of our lives, which is our black box, I don't want to come before God with this. Because if I do, I'll be judged and cast into the lake of fire. I do not want to come before God like this. What is the solution? The solution is in Hebrews 9, 7, where it says, without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. And then you can look up in John 1, 29, and then 1 John 1, 7 through 9. We also read here in Ephesians 1, 7, we have redemption through his blood. Then Hebrews 10, 19, having boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the blood of Jesus builds a mighty wall between sin and and believers who have been made the righteousness of Christ through his blood. Hallelujah. So the protection that any human being needs to realize and I must have to not be able to come before God with the black book, so to speak, I have to come to him with a covering. And that covering is the blood of Jesus. All my sins are covered by the precious blood of Jesus. This is such a simple way to explain to people the greatest message in all the world, the message of having my sins being forgiven. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed because of the blood of the lamb. And so when I stand before God, I do not come with this. I come with this and I stand before him because I cannot come with my own self, with my own works, with my own uh, trying to give money in it so I can go to heaven. I can't even go with my own righteousness because the Bible says that my righteousness is like filthy rags. The whole story is Jesus. It's not anything else. It is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What happens when the blood is applied upon my life? This is what happens. I am redeemed and it is like I have never sinned. Washed through the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And it cleanses me from all unrighteousness and I come and stand before God. Now let me read to you Isaiah 118. This is good news, glory. Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins again. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us in Psalms 103 verse 12, for as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. 
Then look up at your own time in Micah, Micah chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. And then in Hebrews 8, 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember them no more. Wow. Even in this challenging time in which we live in, we still have the best news in all the world. Because in a moment, in a moment, when we say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, I ask you to cover me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Within that moment, we go from that to that. Then I like another part. Now you'll ask me the question, Gordon, have you ever sinned since you've become a Christian? And shamingly, I'll have to say yes. Then you say to me, how can you be up there preaching? If you, since you've become a Christian, you have sinned. Well, whew, the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I call on the blood of Jesus daily. Oh, hallelujah. What a message. What a message. What a message. What a message of hope. What a message of peace. Now get this. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Or people who have died. My mother, I was there that the day that she died, I walked into her room and she was in and out of a coma. I walked in and I said, Mother, Gordon is here. And she came out of that coma, looked at me, smiled, and then died. I was never the same. I was there with the woman who brought me into this world, and I was there with that woman when she left this world. Where did she go? Today, she is walking on the streets of gold. Hallelujah. Yeah, walking on the streets of gold. This is our destiny. We are going to be in heaven with Jesus. Sorry, I get so excited. We're going to be in heaven with Jesus forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So what you're going through today is nothing. This is where you're headed, friend. You're headed to be with Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. That's why we can rejoice. That's why we can be happy because we know that one day at any second, it could be tonight that we'll be walking on the streets of gold. Oh, I'm telling you, but something bigger than that, just to be able, listen to me now, just to be able to look in the face of the one that I have been preaching about for the last 53 years of my life, I will look at him and gaze at his greatness and his love and his mercy. Oh, hallelujah. What a day, what a day that will be when I'll meet him face to face. Listen to me now. We went from this to this, to this, to this. How about you? Are you ready to meet him? If you're not, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I claim you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. I want you to take this $4 sermon <laughs> and share it with your friends. It's a remarkable, simple message of Jesus Christ. And you will see during this season that we're going through right now, people want to pray. People want to know about God because God is knocking on their heart's door. And with this simple little message, you can lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that during this season, and I know it's true, that there is going to be souls brought into the kingdom of God. 
and I release the spirit of the evangelist. Now, let me say this as I close. The church, the Christian community has lost the spirit of evangelism. We need to get back to the spirit of evangelism. What I love about the Baptist people, they'll take a baseball game and turn it into a crusade. They'll, they'll, they have so many different ways in winning people to Christ. You become all things to all men that you might win some. So I want to encourage you today to find a way to share the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't condemn people to hell. Tell them how bad they are. Turn or burn. We already know that. You know, we need to give them a simple message of the love of God and tell them, look, if you don't repent, you're going to hell. But I come with good news. You don't have to go that route. Amen. I pray for you today. This week before Easter, as we celebrate it, let me tell you a story. I was in Israel many years ago. And we went, we had the, the, the guide. I, I don't know how, it, well, I do know how it happened. I was a guest of Israel, okay? And so I, I flew into New York City area, and then from there I went to Israel. The government of Israel paid for my flight. It paid for everything, okay? And so, but it was a non-Christian tour guide. So he would take us to this place, to that place, and he would, you know, take us to this tomb. Here's, here's this guy. Here's, so I'm thinking, my God, did I come all the way over here to see a bunch of dead people? <laughs> and then he said, over there is where they say that, that where Jesus died on the cross and they put him in that tomb. You guys go down there and check it out. I'm going to wait in the bus. Said, all right. So I went down there, you know, and I saw the sign. He whom you are looking for is not here. This German began to shout, Woo! Santa Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And then the question is, if he's not there, where is he? Well, he came into this empty tomb. That's right. And when I invited Christ to come into my life, I was empty, I was depressed, I was suicidal, I didn't know what was happening in my life. And when I received him as my personal savior, he came in to my empty tomb and we've been in fellowship ever since. I bless you today in the name of the Lord and I pray that God will minister to you and through you today. This is our greatest hour of evangelism. In Jesus' name. If you have a prayer request, type it in there. I always go back and look and we will pray with you. Have a wonderful day. Share the gospel with somebody today. Bye-bye.